Hi everyone, welcome to The World Today with Brian Stiegel. I am Brian Stiegel, obviously. Sorry if there's a weird delay at the beginning. Um, just uh, like to be sure that I'm recording and don't want to start too early. Um, but I guess it might be better to do that than to start late. But uh, let me tell you what kind of topics we have today, guys, uh, that I'd like to touch on. Um, maybe like to touch on... Uh, some dreams, some emotion creeping into dreams, and I know some people don't like hearing about other people's dreams, um, I get that, so I'll keep it brief with that, I just want to make a point, um, about, uh, how, how emotions can creep in, there are emotions you don't know you have, maybe repressed emotions, um, so we'll get there, um, well, we might talk about, uh, the death penalty, uh, the judicial system at large, um, Stuff like the voting age. Uh, I want to talk a lot about genetics today. Some interesting uh, genetic talk, um, and what I think about uh, genetics, and uh, how you know, kind of what I find interesting about genetics. Um, we we're going to probably talk about some more AI, uh, science, and tech stuff like that. So uh, we've got a pretty exciting show. Um, we might touch on hubris. And, uh, you know, we might talk about, um, what constitutes selling out, um, and, uh, how my day was just in general, because it turns out, um, uh, you know, we'll get into it. So, um, first, I guess we'll start with, uh, the news that I have for you guys. Um, you know, I told you guys I was trying to hit 225 on my bench. Um, I didn't, uh, get it as well as I'd liked. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, I was getting ready to do it, kind of worked up, was going slow, was, was just trying to, you know, focus, make sure I can hit it today. Um, and one of the trainers at the gym, uh, you know, he's working with somebody else, uh, asked if I need a spot. So, of course, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, don't want to kill myself. Um, even though I'm sure it would have been fine. I think next time I'm going to try without a spotter, uh, because it's hard for me to tell how close I was alone, you know, how close I'd be alone and, um, how much he helped, you know? Uh, so, I, you know, I hit it, but he was spotting, and, you know, so I asked him, like, how much did he help, uh, you know, if he could, like, you know, rate it a percent, like, you know, maybe if, you know, if they're, like, Ugh, lifting it for you, you know, maybe, you know, they did, like, half of it, uh, but, you know, if they're just kind of going up slowly, you know, maybe they did, like, 10%, maybe if they just had fingertips and were just helping you not get stuck, you know, maybe that's, like, 5%, 2% help, I don't know, I just thought it might be useful to kind of, um, give that a number, but he said he didn't know, he just, you know, kind of helped it, he helped it move, he just made sure it didn't get stuck, um, kind of kept it moving, uh, so I appreciate the spot, I appreciate that, but I think next time I try, I'm gonna have to try to hit it alone, because, um, you know, I'm sure, pretty sure I could hit it in high school with a spotter, um, I want to hit it without a spotter, I want to hit it myself, um, just in case I ever got to pick up something heavy, maybe I can do it. So, uh, that's where I am on that fitness stuff, guys. Um, also, great, 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 I've been waiting for this. Finally dropping below, like, 170. Uh, when I get home, be looking at the scale, it'll be like 168, 169. And, of course, that's because I lose a few pounds of sweat each night, and I don't eat until after work and exercising and stuff, um, cause I only have, like, a brief window to eat food, but, uh, so, dropping that weight, seems like the quitting monster is, uh, really working, and, um, and I'm getting there, getting to my goal, and that's, uh, the point of life, right, make goals, meet your goals, uh, become better as a person, and, um, you know, as a society, because you are part of society, so uh, the better you are, the better society gets, uh, marginally. <coughs> Burp. Um, just had some kratom before this, so, uh, you know, may, may burp a few times, but, uh, that's okay. It's not like you haven't burped before. So, uh, let's see. I do want to talk about things like, um, you know, like I said, a lot of genetics, 
now before that, I guess we'll keep on with the um, myself, the more uh, personal kind of stuff. That you know, I'll tell you about my dream first. So this dream was a. Uh, I don't dream often. I'll just make that clear. Um, started dreaming a lot more when I stopped smoking uh, the marijuana. Um, but now I uh, just don't seem to dream that much anyway. Um, so I did have a dream this weekend, very vivid. Um, and, you know, it's always weird when you have a dream and there are people in it who you haven't seen for years, haven't seen, haven't spoken to. And uh, this uh, friend I went to high school with, this girl I went to high school with, uh, she was in my dream. And now you guys, you know... it talking about dreams might be dumb, but, but here it goes, okay, because I think, uh, some emotions leaked into it, or some, like, repressed feelings, maybe from, like, years ago, um, I think may have leaked into it, so, uh, you know, I don't really know the setting at some house, maybe a party or something, um, no place that I recognize, um, but in my dream it seemed familiar, so, you know, I wasn't, like, panicking, where am I, um, so, don't ask me how it got there, because I don't know, but it ends up where I've got, like, and this is going to sound wild, and you're like, why are you telling us about this kind of dream? Okay, I had two naked ladies on either side of me, and, um, you know, one, I guess, might be um, kind of representative of all these, um, you know, girls I may have gone on dates with lately, Re more recently, not lately, uh, but, you know, uh, and, and the girls that, like, you might see on Tinder and stuff, or that you match with, because, uh, you're probably not matching with the tens on there, uh, not if you're like me, anyway, so, uh, you know, this girl's representative of probably people, uh, you know, people I've seen lately, people on Tinder, uh, just how my dating life's been lately, now, um, the other girl over here, uh, she was someone who I'd known in high school, and, uh, she was one of my best friends, um, and it's weird because I haven't spoken to her, I think, since the end of high school, um, you know, except that summer, I think we all hung out a few times, but, you know, I haven't talked to her in years, I might have talked to her once after that, but, yeah, I really haven't talked to her in years, I haven't seen her in years, and, um, she just showed up in my dream, but, so I guess what she might represent is um, people that I actually care about and have, like, a deep connection to or some kind of history with. Or um, maybe just people that I'm really compatible with. People that I had, would have real, true feelings about. Because I did have real, true feelings uh, for this girl um, for a long time. And uh, we never dated or anything, unfortunately. Um, it might be one of the things I regret most about, about you know, high school. Is, you know, because I may have been able to. I mean, I know I probably could have. But um, I didn't know that at the time. And uh, it was never, you know, the timing never worked out well. Um, but uh, I really did like that girl. And, uh, so I think in this, what she represented, you know, may have just been herself. Maybe my brain was telling me, hey, hit hit her up, see how she's doing. You miss her, you know, you haven't talked to her in a while. Um, but I think, you know, probably more likely is that it represents people that I know well. And, uh, you know, girls that I really have a connection with intellectually, um, and, uh, mentally, I guess, emotionally. Um, so... Uh, what was interesting was, throughout the dream, uh, you know, I could have either of these women, that's just the dream, that's how it was, uh, and I didn't want this one, you know, um, I didn't want the one that, you know, represents all these, uh, girls I've seen lately, or, like, Tinder girls, or whatever, um, I wanted this girl that I used to, you know, for lack of a better word, used to love, um, in a, in a, you know, different but really special way, you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, so I think, you know, that's what she represents and stuff, and I think, 
what happened during the dream is I chose her all dream. I was only concerned about her, didn't care at all where this other girl went. Uh, you know, I sent her off or something. She disappeared. And, um, you know, then we were sleeping later, uh, not getting nasty. Um, you know, so I don't know why they were naked. That doesn't actually, it's really not even that pertinent to the story, actually. So I guess I could have left it out. But they were, and I'm telling you what happened. So, uh... You know, in this dream, she's sleeping, like, on this couch, on a section of this couch, and I think I was, and then I ended up getting a little away from her, and, like, I woke up in the middle of sleeping in my dream, like, oh, you know, still part of the dream, though, and I look over, and she's far away, and I just wanted to be close to her, so, like, I reached out and touched her and scooted by her and, you know, put an arm around her or something, and and I think that uh, kind of highlights the need for intimacy, uh, but not intimacy with just anyone, intimacy with someone who you care deeply about, who you share, um, like, a connection with, like, intellectually and mentally and emotionally, um, who you get along with, you have fun with, and, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, what that kind of represents. Uh, you know, well, my brain's telling me to go back in time, but I can't do that, so, sorry, brain. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was, uh, thought that was interesting, um, because, you know, at, at a certain point, I had to choose somebody else instead of her, um, we were at, uh, one of my best friend's houses, a party, and, um, we were all in this group of friends, and, uh, we were all real close to each other, and so we were having, like, a, you know, a small bonfire, some beer, some smoke, all that, you know, with these, um, you know, eight, eight people, maybe, and, um, so I think I had my girlfriend there at the time, I'd had her with me there, and, um, my, my friend whose house it was at, he was kind of, uh, making his way around the group of friends, and, um, was kind of talking, kind of dating, kind of up in the air with this, uh, girl who, who was in my dream, and, uh, you know, so, it was back then, we were all hanging out, and, um, she needs to use the bathroom or something, and so she's got to come up to the house because we're having a bonfire, obviously, outside. So, you know, oh, I got a P2 or I need another drink or I need to roll something up. I don't know. I'll go with you. So I went with her and, uh, you know, upstairs we go to use the bathroom, get whatever we need to get. And, um, you know, she comes up to me and uh, she says, if I asked you to have sex with me right now, would you? And, um... I couldn't, I couldn't say no, because if she had, I'm sure I would have said yes, um, but I'd already done something before to a friend, um, you know, in respect to, like, one of his, you know, lovers, I guess, or, um, exes, and so I, I had that already happen with somebody else, and they got, so mad and upset, and it really hurt our friendship, but, you know, we, we were still friends, and we forgave each other, you know, we, it was funny, in that situation, we were still hanging out, even though we were mad at each other, um, you know, he was mad, I didn't say anything, I was mad that he cared still when he said that he didn't really, or something, you know, like, it was just dumb, but we were still hanging out, even though we were mad at each other, just because that's what we did, and we were friends, and then eventually we actually talked about it, and, uh, really forgave each other, so that had already happened, you know, a couple years, three or four years before this had happened at this party, and so when she asked, you know, if, if I asked you to have sex with me right now, would you, um, and I couldn't say no, and I wanted to say yes, but I didn't, you know, that stuff flashed in my head. I didn't want to hurt my friend who, you know, kind of had a thing with this girl, although it didn't go anywhere, so I totally probably, you know, could, maybe I could have, but maybe if I did, maybe he would have thought it would, maybe it would have ruined the friendship, like, I don't know, um, and also, I had a girlfriend there, and I don't, you know, like cheaters, you know, people who cheat on people, and I didn't want to be that guy, especially when she's there at the party, and the other dude's there at the party, like, how shitty 
would you have to be to do that? But then again, I don't I don't think it would have made us shitty because um I mean, I know I loved her in a way, you know, and I think she had feelings for me which I didn't know about until later. But um you know, I think that's interesting. So I I'd, I'd had a chance to um to hook up with this girl years before probably one of the last times I'd seen her and uh, I didn't so I don't know if my brain wants me to go back in time and redo that or if it's just telling me you know you got to find somebody like that again because uh, I mean she you know it's weird when you meet someone who you're not romantically involved with um, but you still have incredibly deep feelings for them and, um, I mean, I took this girl to prom, I think I took her to homecoming, or, you know, a couple of those, but, um, just kind of as friends, and, you know, stupid me didn't make a move, um, like I should have, but, you know, you live and you learn, and, uh, so, so it was just weird that this girl showed up in my dreams, and that, um, after all these years, I'd, uh, still pick her over this other random girl, you know, um, I guess maybe that would be obvious, because, you know, of the situation, but, anyway, uh, I'll move on here, I just wanted to tell you guys about that, because I thought it was interesting, you know, maybe my brain's telling me not to be with these girls that don't, you know, don't settle, um, for someone who's like, I think, I could be happy with them if, like, I really tried. Uh, maybe I should be with someone who makes me happy already. You know, not that I have to depend on them for happiness, because, of course, you don't want to depend on people for happiness, um, because people let you down. But maybe uh, maybe I should find somebody who is easy, you know, easy to talk to, easy to be around, uh, who I have fun with, and uh, who makes me happy and uh makes me want to be a good person, the best person um so I could be around them. But uh you know that's that weird dream I had and uh that's how I felt uh when I woke up. It was it was confusing. You know, it it was it was confusing cuz I hadn't haven't seen her in a long time and you know, you got to figure out what your brain's trying to tell you. Um and just, uh, I don't think anything sexual happened in that dream, just so you know, it wasn't one of those dreams, but, uh, I think it was a dream that tells you something's wrong in your life, or you're, you may make a decision that's not the best decision for you, uh, because of, you know, maybe you're lonely, or, or whatever, you know, um, you crave connection with another human being, but, uh, you know, maybe my subconscious knows that, that's not the way that's going to, you know, make me happy. And, um, you know, I've thought before, because I've been with some great gals, and um, sometimes I, uh, I'm i not too happy, even though they're incredible. And I've wondered before if it is impossible, like, for me to be happy and content with something or someone in my life. Um, because uh, I always find an issue, or, like, I, I'll get I just angry or something about something stupid so um you know obviously I've worked on that over the years or whatever but I mean I still think that there's a good chance that I'm like that uh and may always be like that but uh who knows maybe I was just never with the right people um but uh moving on now from that I guess um I do want to point out something super cool I have a logo now. Uh, it says TWT with Brian Stiegel and the episode. So that uh, if you guys look, you know, just scrolling through, you, oh, this is episode whatever. I haven't seen that yet. I'll watch it. Or um, just look a little better, look a little more legit, look, uh, you know, maybe attract some people. Maybe, uh, plus I got bored and I thought I need to do it sometime. And it was kind of fun to learn how to do that. Because, again, this podcast is about learning. Um, as well as all the other honesty and having fun and, uh, you know, all that shit. But, uh, yeah, so we got the world today with Brian Stiegel. Whoop. I'm really bad at this, by the way, pointing which direction it is. 
I practice this uh, so many times. I practice like, duh, pointing at it. Uh, and I'm so bad with uh, looking in like mirrors or I guess cameras and deciding which way, you know, is which. I don't know. Anyway, uh, TWT obviously stands for the world today. You see it's got a couple little continents on it, you know, little land masses. I made those little guys. Um, and I think it's uh I think it's cute. I think it looks cool. I think it looks a little professional. Um I guess the green land masses could be more professional, but it is the world today, so there's the world, the earth, the planet. Um So uh you know, and as you'll see, it has no ice caps, uh, because it is the world today where there are none. Um so that was lame. All right, moving on, guys. Uh, so we got the death penalty. We got genetics, which I can go on about for a long time. And we got AI and science and tech and maybe hubris. But all of these things kind of really um, go together, tie in together, are related. So I guess I'll start with the uh, death penalty and stuff. And I will say, uh, some of these topics, I, you know, it made me think about it, and I, I have no problem sharing this or telling you this, uh, some of these topics I thought about, um, because I'll watch other podcasts and they might talk about that, and so, uh, some of these topics come from, um, uh, Rogan's podcast with Nicholas Christakis, um, and uh, they touch on a lot of this, and that happened uh, last week. So it is current in the world today, and that's why I'm touching on it, so I can give you guys my thoughts. Uh, and just interesting shit I like to talk about. Um, and if you don't know, Nicholas Christakis was a, he was a professor at Yale, I believe, um, you know, a couple years ago, 2017 maybe, uh, when... Uh, the university said, hey, you guys can't wear these costumes. And everyone, you know, like certain ones that people find offensive. And, of course, people can find anything offensive. And the whole idea of Halloween is to dress up as something. And if you're dressing up as something other than yourself, anybody could find any level of um, offensiveness out of it, uh, right? Like if you dress up, uh, you know, maybe you're a dinosaur, you know, you know, I could, oh, that offends me because dinosaurs don't exist anymore, and they used to, or it offends me because dinosaurs were never real, and you're trying to push, push the agenda of, uh, old earth and, and dinosaurs and shit, uh, you know, people make, people say some stupid shit, you know, like, you could go be like an insect, you know, you could, you could be like a fly, you know, a little mosquito, Someone would be like, oh, it's so offensive to dress up as mosquitoes because they carry malaria and they kill so many people every year that to them, you know, they're probably traumatized by seeing mosquitoes and seeing you dressed up as a mosquito is super offensive, you know. Uh, you just get people saying all this stupid shit, right? Uh, who cares if it's really offensive? Don't look at it. You know, if someone's got a costume on that offends you, don't fucking look at it. It's really not that hard, right? Like, uh, I mean, or find humor in it because you, they're probably using like stereotypes and they're kind of like a caricature or like a, an exaggeration of the truth. So, you know, they exaggerate certain features, uh, for comedic effects or whatever, so that they're recognizable as this person or, you know, whatever that they dressed up as or whomever. And, uh, it's just, Jesus Christ, you get these people bitching about all this most stupid shit nowadays. And uh, it's part of the reason for this podcast is to tell you to, like, uh, you know, and you can't say man up and you can't say grow a pair because they suggest that, like, masculinity is better than the alternative, whatever they think the alternative is in that situation. Uh, but really, we're just saying handle your shit and, like, uh, don't get offended so easily. Uh, be someone who can take care of themselves and their community without, um, you know, crying every time someone says something you don't like. 
Um, because we live in America and we have free speech, unlike most of the world. We're like one of the luckiest countries in the world because free speech is guaranteed in our Constitution. And have people... Oh, Jesus Christ, I can go on about that for a long time. Uh, but I won't. So that's uh, who Nicholas Christakis is. And his wife had sent out like uh, an email saying, Hey, basically, this is the gist of it, paraphrasing, Hey, you guys are adults. You guys as in students. You students are adults. And maybe, maybe you shouldn't want the college or the authority uh, to tell you what you can and can't wear. Maybe you guys are adults and you're old enough to make your own decisions. Maybe, you know. And then they're like, no, we're not, you know. So that that was that. And um, so he got in a whole shit storm. And uh, if you haven't seen the video, you can, you know, see this video, these people, like, berating him, uh, basically, and um, harassing him. And he handles it, like, uh, with the patience of... Like a frog, you know? He's got the frog patience. He's, he was just sitting there all calm. And when it was his turn, you know, maybe he he snatched that fly out of the air, you know? But, but uh, you know, he, he, he handled it with such um, poise, I guess, would be a good word. Uh, and it's a word you don't hear much anymore because so many people lack it uh, that it's pretty much gone out of the uh, common vernacular. But, uh, so that was him, and that's where some of these topics came from, and, uh, I think he's great, and, uh, so the question in that case was, should you students who are adults, uh, be told what you can and can't wear and how you can or can't express yourself on Halloween, uh, which is a night for dressing up in costumes, uh, being somebody other than yourself, and of course these kids didn't want uh didn't want that responsibility and they didn't want people to be able to offend them because what if they saw like a dog you know what if somebody dressed up as a dog and they went out you know at a bar and they saw this person dressed as a dog and their dog just died 2 weeks ago and they had to put her down because she had cancer and they had her since she was a baby and who the fuck cares dude sorry your dog died you know what Jesus Christ, you guys want to know this? You want to know what happened when our childhood dog died? Okay, and this story, it's going to sound made up. It's going to sound like bullshit. 100% true, swear to God. Okay, so, we had this dog since, you know, I don't know. I was a baby. My brother was a baby. And, uh, you know, we got pictures of, like, us, like, laying on her, using her as a pillow and stuff growing up. She was a big uh, Australian shepherd, uh, really furry, uh, kind of long snout, actually looked Kind of like a bear. Um, so imagine a bear, but a little smaller and way friendlier. And she was the best dog ever, right? Now, eventually, she had a hard time getting up the stairs, getting down the stairs, walking around, getting up, getting down. So uh, we had to put her down like you do with most animals so you can uh, curb their suffering. And... Uh, <coughs> A burp. All right. That felt good. All right. So, yeah, she was the best dog. Uh, she lived to be like, I don't know, 13, 14, 15. Um, so we put her down, you know, at the end of the week, one, you know, some week, uh, you know, and of course everyone's crying. Everyone's all sad. So my mom says, hey, how about I take you guys out somewhere to cheer you up? You guys want to go see a movie? And we're like all right, we'll go see a movie, get our mind off of our dead dog. And you guys will not believe what movie she took us to see. Now, if you can guess it, I'd be amazed. But I don't think you could, because even like a... You couldn't write this shit. You can make this shit up. This is how unfortunate my life was in this instant. You know, obviously not forever, but this was a really unfortunate coincidence. So my mom took us to uh, the movies, and uh, this movie was about a family who also had a dog, and it was a super cute movie, and the family loved the dog, and uh, so of course that didn't help us 
get our dog off of our mind. Uh, but at least it was nice to kind of look and see and laugh and have fun. Oh, I remember when, you know, our dog, Shelby, I remember when Shelby, you know, did this and we all laughed. And I remember, you know, relating things from the movie to your life and all that. Um, and then, no bullshitting, in the end of the movie, spoiler alert, guys, spoiler alert, in the end of this movie, they put that dog down. They put it down. They killed it at the end of that movie. I swear to God, the weekend after we put our childhood dog down, my mother took my siblings and I to see Marley and me. See Marley and me. The movie about the beautiful dog and the happy family who has to put down the beautiful dog. Oh my God, dude. It was... Uh, I, we, we must have cried for two days. You know, normally you watch that movie and you get pretty sad because they just put down a dog. But imagine if you literally just put down your dog and then you see that movie. You're freaking the fuck out. And you're like, God, everything sucks. Oh, God wants me to be sad. Why would I, why would that happen? Um, oh my gosh. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And, you know, like I said, I couldn't make that stuff up. That's how unfortunate uh, that moment was. Uh, but, you know, you get over it. You know, you get a new dog. Or you stuff your old dog and, like, use it as, like, an end table so it's still there. Or you use it as, like, a pillow. You stuff it. But somehow make it soft and malleable so you can like lay on it like a pillow. You know, kind of disgusting. Uh, but some people really, really don't want to part ways with their uh, puppy. So, uh, you know, that was uh, talking about... Uh, I got there by talking about the kids at Yale and their stupid Halloween shit. Now, before I go on... Uh, because it's distracting me, and I'd like to point it out. Um, at least looking through my webcam, what I notice is a slight red mark right here on my nose. Most, you know, you guys probably wouldn't have noticed it, but I notice it. And uh, I think I'm wearing my respirator too tight, because it goes like this over your face. And so it pushes right there, and it used to be too tight, and it would tear the skin up, and I'd have a scab. I had to loosen it or whatever. But, um... Also, I trimmed this bad boy down. I shaved up the hers, and uh, I'm feeling good, feeling fresh. You know, I hit the gym today, obviously, like I said, so I'm feeling uh, feeling exercised. I'm feeling fresh, and I'm feeling happy. And uh, I'll tell you why I'm feeling happy, guys. It was a good day, okay? I got to work, right? And... Sunday nights, we got to do our 10-hour shift. 10-hour shifts suck, uh, but they're not all that bad. You get used to it. Um, just feels a lot longer than an 8-hour shift. But, um, and coincidentally, most of the time on these Sunday nights when we have the longest shift of the week, I tend to be on um, a job that is one of the hardest jobs in the department, um, maybe the hardest uh, just because of what you have to do and the speed you have to go at. And, you know, there's like me and two other people uh, that do it regularly and that do it well. And um, so I was on that position. You know, I was like, whatever. You know, it's at least it's going to be over in less than a half a day. You know, trying to look at things on the positive side. It's like, eh, it won't be too bad. Because as long as I stay in a good mood and I try to roll with things, um, then it's not too bad. Like, but if I get angry about something not going the way I think it should, then obviously that's where uh, it's where you get upset. You upset yourself. You you just be pissy. And then you're an asshole and nobody likes it. So, uh, but what I got to do, I got to do something super fun. Uh, this new position I've been learning using, like, a chop gun. Um... So I spray fiberglass and resin, and it's super cool because I was putting all the uh, first laminate coats on the units, and so every unit that comes out has a first laminate and a second laminate, and today I was putting on the first laminate for our shift. So uh, 
I don't know, I just think that's cool that I contributed that much to it. I mean, rolling, you still contribute, but that feels like I did more, uh, even though it was the same. And so I like it because I like to learn, uh, you know, again, major theme of the podcast, learning. Um, but I like to learn things, but I like to learn how to, like, work this robot, how to change things and clean things and and make sure I can make this run smoothly so that hopefully I can do that all the time uh, because then I'd get to wear... Uh, fresh air hood and then I wouldn't have to wear the respirator I might not get that mark on me um I'd be a lot cooler so if I do end up being able to do that like most days uh hopefully I won't have like a heat rash all summer that would be great um but anyway I was super happy I got to do that super fun uh not expected and the person who usually does it is moving to a different shift so I may be the guy doing that and one more thing to top it off that makes it great and why I really did want to learn that is because uh, you have, there are four of those guns in there that spray, like, you know, first laminate, second laminate, Joe Code, and, uh, and um, IRs, which also does second laminate kind of resin and stuff. But if you learn all four of those positions, you get a raise. You get, like, at least a buck an hour more. Um, so that's dope, and I would love to, uh, do that, and now I'm gonna be a quarter of the way there very soon. Um, so, uh, that's why I've been having a great day. Uh, pretty happy, pretty content. Um, I'm on it, getting it, and, uh, so, you know, went from having one of the hardest jobs to having a job that I've been looking forward to doing uh, for a long time now and have been slowly learning how to do. But today it was like full throttle all the way in, uh, just learning it. And I did it for like eight hours because the first two hours I did do that other job. And then the rest of the time I did that new one. And it was uh, super duper cool. Uh, so, you guys get my uh, lame little saying. Um, now, back to, uh, where I was at before I was speaking about my day and how well it's going. Um, you know, I touched on, um, you know, n uh, Nicholas Christakis and, uh, the Yale incident. And, you know, those kids didn't want to be told that they should have free speech. I guess they wanted to be told, this is what you can wear, this is what you can't wear, no exceptions, something like that, you know, um, they really wanted to be protected in a bubble in a safe space, uh, now, you have kids like that who are like, uh, you know, teenagers still, or early 20s, young adults, you know, like, I'm a young adult still, so I'm grouped in with this group, but that's, you know, this is another reason I don't feel too much in this generation, because I don't get worked up over the same stupid shit that other people get worked up about, um, you know, maybe that's the difference in morals. Uh, well, and you know, I think it is because it's, it could be easy to get offended about all that stuff. But I value free speech uh, more than I value uh, people's feelings. Uh, you know, I value truth and free speech and science. And, um, and I don't care really uh, about people's feelings. Um, and so... You know, insofar as that, you know, using free speech or being honest or truthful uh, is going to offend them, then who cares? You know, it's not my problem that you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth! So, uh, but those kids are young adults, and they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be told that they have freedom of speech. They want to be told what to do, what to wear. Now... Uh, I'd heard someone suggest uh, that those people shouldn't be able to vote. And um, I think there's two arguments here. One being, um, well, I guess there would be three. Well, many. Okay, when you're 18, you can sign up for the military and, uh, you know, go die for your country. Now, I recently just started thinking, I mean, if you're thinking kids shouldn't, you know, and you shouldn't drink till you're 21. You should, probably shouldn't smoke weed until you're older. Um, but, you know, you got to wait till your brain's fully developed. And that's the big milestone. And it's around age 25 is when, you, what is it, your prefrontal cortex uh, has finished developing. Um, which I believe, you know, like, handles, like, impulse control. And, 
you know, decision making and and stuff like that. And I'm not sure how much, but I know um it does have some effect on all that kind of stuff. And uh, you can make more poor uh, choices, poor decisions, uh, because I don't think you may, maybe you don't consider the future as much, and uh, it's harder for you to balance, like, short-term pleasure uh, with long-term benefits, or whatever, so, um, uh, maybe, you know, they should change the voting age, now, what would they change it to, um, some people think 18 is okay because you can die for your country, but maybe you should change that. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to die for your country at 18 because, well, I mean, p- the kids are signing up when they're 16 or 17, you know, um, and then they ship out when they're 18, but it's like, uh, or they go to basic when they're 18, but if your brain's not fully developed, how are you really consenting that much, uh, to going to war and fighting in a battle, you know, how, how could you really consent to signing up for the military if, uh, you can't, you know, if your brain's not fully developed, you can't really make perfectly rational decisions all the time necessarily, so I think, uh, you know, maybe people shouldn't be allowed to vote until they're older, uh, maybe people shouldn't be allowed to go into the military until they're older, but then the other thing that I've considered before and, um, have, have kind of thought about is that you can drive a car when you're 16. Now, I don't think that we should raise the minimum driving age because I drove when I was 16. Most people I knew drove when they were 16. Um, you're in a rural area. You kind of have to, to have any kind of life in high school. I mean, imagine raising it to like 18 and you live in a rural area what are you going to do? You're you're fucked. You can't get an Uber or a Lyft because there are none near you. You know, you can't necessarily ride your bike 20 miles and then go with your buddy out to, like, a restaurant or a bar or whatever. That's another 30 miles away. You can't, like, are you kidding me? Uh, so it, I think, you know, 16, you can probably get a car then. Um, I don't think 16-year-olds are necessarily killing people or dying, like, incredibly disproportionately compared to other age groups, but I could be totally wrong about that. Um, I would think uh, the youngest and the oldest drivers would be most susceptible to uh, accidents and stuff, so I guess I don't really know. Um, But, you know, I think if you're old enough to drive like a, uh, you know, fiery metal death trap with like contained explosions happening in it, uh, you know, weighs thousands of pounds, could easily kill uh, multiple people with just one mistake. And it might not even really be a mistake on your part. Something might happen to the car, you know. You might hit a pothole and and your tire might pop and then you might start swerving. I I don't know. Just shit can happen. But uh, if, you know, so 16-year-olds can drive that, I think they should be able to. Should they be able to vote? Well, if you can kind of hold, like, your life and other people's lives in your hands and you're developed enough to do that, then maybe you should be able to vote when you're 16. Um, Of course, that would make most, you know, more people angry. Oh, we don't need all those dumb little kids voting, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Um, But I don't think you should say that an age group shouldn't be able to vote just because of their political beliefs. You know, maybe it is true that, like, 18 to 25, let's say, uh, runs, like, incredibly liberal. Uh, I don't think you should say that you should change it to 25 just because uh, those young kids feel that way. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't think people make the argument that it's because they have one ideology over the other, just that their brain's not fully developed and... I don't know. I think that's interesting. Some people think that they make really stupid, poor choices, but, you know, some some young adults uh, make choices to uh, go to college or go to university, depending on which continent you're on. Um, you know, they, they, they can make choices to do that. They can make choices to become a parent, and they may be a good parent. Um, you know, they can make monetary choices. Maybe they have to take over, like, their parents' estate you know, when they're, like, 18, because maybe, you know, I mean, there are definitely young people out there, young adults, who, um, are really contributing to society, and they really make good decisions for themselves, and, um, 
just because their brain's not fully developed doesn't mean it's not developed enough for them to have like a complex rational thought that involves nuance um that forms an ideology or a belief i just think uh i don't know i i don't really think we should raise the voting age um i think it's okay where it is if anything maybe lower it to 16 maybe raise it to 21 but not not 25 your your brain don't need to be fully developed i don't think uh because uh you know most people you know we're lucky to live now and it is the best time to be alive and you know we all live past 25 now so we kind of take it for granted um but if like the most you would live is like 40 or 50 and uh most people died when they were like zero to two, you know, babies died all the time. Um, you know, maybe you'd say 25 is old enough. Maybe you'd say like 11 or 12 is old enough, like, you know, our ancestors did uh, for mating. Um, because I guess that's what nature says. And uh, But, um, you know, nature also says our brains may not be fully developed yet. So, who knows? Um about that, I just thought it was interesting to think about. Now, um, this is, uh, kinda related, but not really. Uh, we got the death penalty and innocence and, uh, the judicial system as a whole. And, um, so, with the death penalty, uh, I, I kinda used to think we should use it more, and then I was like, eh, I don't know, because I learned how many people have been exonerated. Uh, from new DNA evidence, uh, who were on death row, or gotten, like, life sentences or something for a crime they didn't commit, and, um, I mean, I think it's terrible to lock somebody up who doesn't deserve it, you know, it's terrible to lock anyone up, really, but people who deserve it, then, like, alright, that's alright, but to lock up somebody who doesn't deserve it, that just sounds, I mean, it's like, it's like torture, you're like, I mean, you're subjecting this human with a sentient conscious mind just like yours to a life of solitude and blandness and like nothingness almost i mean how many bricks can you look at before you know you get tired of looking at bricks and if you're innocent and you don't deserve that then i mean you should should never be put to death if you're innocent right um, so the question is, is it more important that we don't, uh, persecute innocent people, or that we do persecute guilty people? What is more important? Now, I think most, I think some people would say definitely that it is more important to punish the guilty party, um, and to punish someone who's guilty, you know, like, I'll punish one guilty person and two innocent people just to be sure that that one guilty person does get punished. Um, I don't like that idea. I don't like that thought, you know. I think you're much better off to not punish somebody who's innocent, um, even at the risk of um, not punishing somebody who is guilty. So... uh you know, there's some of my thoughts on that, and, you know, I think I'm a sucker. I know I'm a sucker. Uh, I like conspiracy stuff, and I like different things or whatever. And um, so I watched Making a Murderer right on Netflix. Great show, uh, documentary. Uh, and obviously, after you watch that, I think most people think, all right, Stephen Avery's probably innocent. But, you know... I read other things, people argue, oh no, definitely not, they left this out, they left this out, they left this out. I'm like, alright. Even if they did leave some stuff out, how, you know, how convincing is it, how accurate is it too? It's like, I, I don't know, it just seems like, and of course it's just me saying what it seems like and seems not like. And I don't know the people. I've never been to the area. Never, you know. But, uh, I feel like he could be innocent. And if he is, he should not be in jail for a crime that he didn't commit. Uh, like what happened the first time. 
you know, maybe, maybe if you do, you know, go to jail, you know, for like 10 years, uh, on a charge that you didn't commit, so you were innocent, but they sent you to jail for 10 years, maybe you should get like a kind of get out of jail free card, or like you have 10 years worth of crimes that you're allowed to commit, and we can't punish you for it, uh, because we already did punish you for it, and I think they should do that on top of giving you, like, uh, money or restitution, whatever it is, you know, you sue for damages in a civil case, um, you know, not only the, the false conviction and, and the time that you lost and all the income you could have had and all the experiences you could have had and all the, like, love you could have had and the family that you could have had, which really is immeasurable. You couldn't put a value to that. It's, uh, it's invaluable, I guess would be, uh, the best word for it, but, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't that be cool, kind of? Like, uh, you know, you accidentally go to jail for ten years, so now you can, like, every time, you know, there's a sign that says, don't walk on grass. You're just strolling on the grass. And the cop's like, hey, you get off that grass. Or I'm going to take you to county jail. And like, bruh, I've been to jail for 10 years. I can sit on this grass all I want. I own this grass, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think it'd be kind of interesting. You know, he could start, like, robbing banks. Or, like, what? what is the most profitable crime with the least chance of... Uh, getting caught, or uh, something bad happening, like getting shot or dying, or something like that. And hopefully you don't affect somebody else's life too terribly negatively in the process. I wonder if you could find somebody that, something that profited you, didn't harm other people, and that you weren't necessarily very likely to get caught, and then even if you did, you have that get-out-of-jail-free card, because you already spent 10 years, you know? Like, what's insider trading? How much does that run, you know? I mean, I guess that hurts other people who are not insiders, um, but, yeah, you know, not the people doing it, but, uh, what if, you know, what if you did something like that, and you only got, you know, it's like, you got eight years, buddy, you're like, hey, man, I made millions, and I already served my time, I served it in advance, so, uh, that'd be interesting, that'd be pretty cool, but, uh, it would suck to have to do that before it. But then... Because, like, I, I always hated getting punished for something that I didn't do, you know? And I was like, if I'm going to get punished for it, I might as well have done it, or I might as well do it, because I'm being treated as though I had done it, you know? So, like, if, you know, maybe somebody, you know, throws a, you know paper ball or like shoots a spitball at somebody and they turn around and they blame you and your teacher's like hey you got detention today and you're like fuck man now i got detention and i didn't even do anything maybe you know i wish i could have shot the spitball and gotten the detention for it because at least at least then i would have done it i would have had the joy of like shooting that spitball at somebody and like chewing it up getting it all wet and then you know, getting your aim right, you know, hit him, like, right behind the ear, uh, you know, it takes a lot of skill, and, uh, you know, it's very rewarding, and if you don't get to do it, and you get blamed for it, you get punished for it, uh, I mean, that's a travesty, so I think you should be able to, uh, do shit, if, if you're innocent, you got punished for something, you should be able to do that thing that you already were punished for, uh, cause I think it would write the karmic balances, you know? So, uh, moving on here, that's, uh, that's kind of what I think about that death penalty and stuff, and, you know, give you guys some jokes about that. Um, let's see, let's see, I really do want to talk about genetics, and I had this idea a while ago, too, but, um, as I talk about it, I think I'll get into it, and, um, and we'll see what happens. So, um, uh, I do love genetics, and, um, I guess I don't necessarily know how, th you know, this topic was even brought up, or why, um, well, 
basically, I guess, what I found interesting uh, was, I mean, you guys know, like, evolution is still occurring, kind of, uh, and then different things evolve. I think I covered this in another episode. You know, people evolve, but systems evolve as well. So, like, culture, um, religion, information, society, um, you know, cities, stuff like that also evolves. Like, living systems or systems um, that are uh, made up of living things, uh, those tend to change and evolve as well. Um, in a similar way, uh, not exactly the same, obviously, because shit like that, you know, doesn't have DNA, but, uh, it is changing and getting better, and that's kind of extinction, or evolution with natural selection and shit. So, uh, let's see. The things I found most interesting, uh, was that they talked about, um, these people, they were the, spelled B-A-G-A-U, or B-A-J-A-U, I believe, and they were, um, some sea people, they were like mermen, uh, basically they lived on these boats that just, uh, and they still do, I believe, they're in, like, the Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean, somewhere around the Philippines, or that area, I guess, and, um, these people, uh, live on these boats, and how they get their food is they, like, deep sea dive, and they hunt underwater, they throw spears, uh, or do whatever, you know, I'm pretty sure they spear, spear hunt, um, and what's really interesting about them is that, um, they somehow have, um, like, higher blood oxygen levels, um, you know, maybe they have, you know, hem uh, red blood cells that can, uh, carry it more efficiently. Maybe they use it more efficiently in, uh, the process of using it. Uh, they can hold their breath longer than any other group of people. Um, and part of this is, you know, definitely nature or nurture. They grew up doing it, so they're going to be good at it. But there are also genetic differences between them and, um, the rest of people and, um, you know, with genetics, you're talking about people and different people and races, kind of, but, like, a race, race is a construct, you know, in that we group people together based on what color their skin is, um, but ethnicity is not a construct, right, uh, where your ancestors were from, and that kind of, I mean, that does actually influence, like, uh, your genetics and stuff, um, Whereas, you know, just because you're Asian, you know, you could be uh, an Indian, like India, Indian, India looking person, or you could be like a, a Russian, you know, and they look very different. So like race doesn't even really mean all that much, but, you know, ethnicity does and people get all butthurt about shit like this, but um, you should definitely be able to talk about groups of people. I don't dislike them or anything. They're, I just find it interesting. And, uh, you know, in science, you talk about groups uh, or populations. And, uh, you know, that helps you to do science. So, uh, anyway, these people, they, uh, they dive better. They swim underwater longer. They're, um, they're sea people, kind of. And now they're, they only have, you know, a few differences. But that's how many will happen, you know, maybe in the, the few thousand years that they've been doing that, um, that allows, you know, maybe someone can hold his breath a little longer, maybe his, um, his blood is more efficient in the way it carries oxygen, so, uh, he can dive longer, so he gets more food, so he has more offspring, because he's bigger, and he can take care of his family better, and so he, you know, is more, um, you know, the more successful you are, the more desirable you are, um, in your tribe, and that sounds, t it sounds bad, oh, you think you're successful, you'll get all the girls, like, no, obviously not, but it is gonna help a lot, um, because, you know, we are animals, and, um, 
So uh, the female, you know, generally will want to uh, make sure that if they have a family with you, that they can take care of that family and support that family. And if you're a deadbeat, um, you're only going to attract deadbeats. And uh, you got to be a little successful at something. You don't even have to be like more successful than anyone else. You just have to like, I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, but, but point is the more successful you are at getting food in, in, in your tribe and community, they, they breed more, they mate more, make more people that have more, um, you know, better diving capabilities and, you know, so on and so forth. Then you get people who are people, but they have a genetic difference. And um, all groups have genetic di genetic differences, right? Like, um, they spoke about, like, lactase or lactose. Like, people are lactose intolerant uh, because you can't break down, what is it, lactase? Um, I don't know. Uh, or you don't have lactase, which bring, yeah, you don't have lactase, um, so you can't digest lactose so people will be lactose intolerant get upset stomachs and stuff when they drink milk um, because for most of the world for most of human history you didn't need to be able to digest milk it was there was no benefit to being able to digest milk it was actually just a hindrance because now you have to have all this uh, lactase in your you know gut and um, you're never using it that's a waste of energy right um, so, you know, that's why, uh, and also, and, and it was like the Europeans or Northern Europeans that, um, got more of the, um, lactase leading longer into adulthood, um, because they, uh, had animals that gave them milk, and so they evolved to be able to make use of that milk. Um, which is why, uh, black people will be, uh, more likely to be lactose intolerant, uh, which I thought was super interesting. I learned that from, um, one of my ex-girlfriends because she was, in fact, lactose intolerant. Um, so another group that I found, uh, super interesting, um, and these, these are kind of like these, uh, seafaring people are Sherpas. Uh, people in like Tibet and Nepal in that area, people who live up in the Himalayas, up in those mountains, uh, where the oxygen, uh, in the atmosphere, there's, uh, I learned this recently, there's actually not less oxygen up there by like percentage of the atmosphere, but, um, things, you know, the atmosphere or the air is like less dense up there, so like, there's not as much oxygen in the same amount of space, even though there's still like 18% or whatever, you know, there's still 18% in this space and in this space, but this space is, you know, in the Himalayas and it's, it's, the air is like spread out more. So there's still 18% in the same amount of space or whatever. But, uh, yeah, since it's farther away, you breathe in less. And so, uh, that's why they're, you know, people say there's less oxygen up there. There's this, you know, technically, I guess, by number of molecules, there is less. Uh, but it's the same percentage, just farther apart, less dense, so you can't breathe as much oxygen in. At least, that's what I'd heard, and I thought it was interesting. And I guess I could tell you guys shit all the time that turns out not to be true whatsoever. Uh, so, my disclaimer, I'm not a scientist. I'm not even that smart. Uh, not smart at all, really. Didn't even graduate college. So, uh, you know, you're listening to some asshole who thinks he knows something. But, uh, let's see. Now, uh, other things I thought were interesting related to this. And, uh, I'll start with, um, this idea, I guess. And this idea is going to sound uh, racist, maybe. Uh, but I think it's just scientifically true. So, a subspecies or different species evolve when a population is, um, away, uh, separated from another population, and, uh, for a long time. 
And so, you know, say you have an island and, you know, you've got a whole bunch of, like, mice on it, you know. And then the island breaks in half. And you got two islands now. Each have half the amount of mice. But, um... This one kind of moved around, but kind of stayed near the equator. This one kind of went farther north, and it went to an area that's a little less warm, a little less tropical or something, you know. Uh, now, let's say there's not as much green or, like, leafy things uh, on northern island. Maybe it doesn't get uh, the right kind of nutrients or the right kind of sun, you know. Well, I guess it'd have mostly the same plants. But eventually, you know, the plants would change. And, um, you know, let's say now these mice have to, like, get into nuts and shells to get food. And these ones still eat all the fruit that grows in this tropical region. Um, now the ones in the north are going to, like... The, the one that's going to be more successful and succeed is the one that can break open the nuts better, so on and so forth. So then you get ones whose sheep are, uh, teeth are a little sharper, or, you know, they have more power in their jaw, or maybe, you know, the jaw is back farther, you know, forward, like the upper and lower, like uh, maybe to change it to give it more pressure, you know, so it can apply more force. Um which would help it get more food, so things like that, and so eventually you would get one island would have uh, something very similar to the mice that you started with, and um, the other island would have something uh, different, you know, maybe something that's a little more shrew-like, I don't know, I don't even really know what a shrew is, but that might be what it is, um, so, so that's the idea, right, and now, that takes like tens of thousands at least, but I'd say, you know, probably about hundreds of thousands of years, um, if not millions. <clears throat> so, uh, I think you can imagine, and at least I can imagine, a situation where Homo sapiens, humans, people, which we are, uh, stayed kind of, uh, you know, let's say technology didn't advance as far and we didn't globalize, um, or say, like, everybody got all over the world, you know, maybe, like, 17, 1800s, people have colonized most places, but then, like, imagine this thing that kills most people, shuts all their technology off, and we forget how to go from, from one place to the other. Um, there's certain islands where, like, like, maybe in the islands, maybe in mountains, maybe in rainforests, people would adapt uh, to become different. I mean, eventually evolution would take place, and you would eventually get different subspecies um, if certain populations were um, separated from the rest of the population for a long enough time and uh, in different enough circumstances so that that would happen. And uh, I think that's super interesting to think about. And uh, kind of, you know, like the Inuit, what did, uh, you know, I, I made a note of them, but uh, I can't really remember exactly what it was uh, that they, that was different about them. Um, oh, that's right, uh, they can stand the cold better, I don't think they get frostbite as easily, uh, which I would guess, you know, obviously, I don't know, I'm just saying reasons that that might be the case, and I'm sure you can look it up and find out why that's the case, but maybe, um, you know, people evolved, you know, the, the people in the group who made more, like, certain proteins that may, like, protect you from the cold, um, or, you know, like like an antifreeze kind of protein. Um, I remember there being some animal that had it, uh, like an antifreeze protein, and then they were going to take that and genetically modify and try to put that trait into um, tomatoes or something so you could grow tomatoes earlier or some kind of plant uh, food, and um, it wouldn't die if it, 
you know, if it froze again after it was planted. Excuse me. So, uh, I think that's interesting. You know, you get them up there and they can't, you know, their hands don't get, you know, they don't get frostbite as easily. And you can imagine eventually maybe they would um, get hair on them and they'd be furry and then they wouldn't need clothes or maybe... Well, they had clothes, and they'd always have clothes. You know, you'd think they wouldn't forget how to make clothes, so then I guess there wouldn't really be the need for them to, to become hairy again uh, because they can just make clothes and then not use energy on grown hair. But there was uh, this family that had this genetic uh, mutation uh, that they grow hair all over their body not just eyebrows head face you know chest armpit groin asshole uh you know they didn't just grow hair where where everyone else grows hair they grew fair hair like on their face and like on their arms and i was like it might not have been on their arms, definitely on their face, um, and they look like wolverine people, you know, they look like half dog, half people, they look like a, a wolf man, uh, a man wolf, you know, uh, a werewolf, one might even say, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's weird, now, um, let me try and find the name of that for you guys, so you can go ahead and look that up, See, it's a genetic mutation. Um, you know, they get hair all over themselves. It is hypertrichosis, sometimes called werewolf syndrome. It's very rare, less than 100 documented cases worldwide, actually. That is how rare it is. But, uh, I mean, so we're like one mutation or maybe a few mutations away um, from being hairy still and look this up guys because it's so interesting because you think like we're people we're above animals we're you know we're superior we're intelligent we're different because we have language and we communicate with each other and so we create culture and technology and and ideologies and stuff but you see a human with hair all over their face and their bodies, and you're like, God damn, you kind of look like a monkey. Not to be racist or anything. Jesus Christ. But really, you look like a fucking... You look like a chimp, kind of. And, uh... I mean, it's wild. Because you can imagine people, you know... So then... And and they kind of have, like, half full hair. But you can imagine if, if they had, like, full, full hair... Like, super fool. And you're like, they they would look like an animal. If somebody saw somebody like that in olden times, no doubt they would just kill him. They'd be like... I mean, they would think it's another monkey. They would think it's some ape, you know, that's not a human. and uh, Or a Bigfoot or something, and they'd kill it. And, uh, I mean, I don't think you could blame them for it, you know? Necessarily. If you didn't know... Maybe you'd do the same thing. Uh, but, I mean, the whole family, uh, this one person's whole family had this mutation. And so, you can imagine, like, what if these people went to live somewhere? Or what if, like, one of the dudes with hair and four other normal people were, like, stranded somewhere? And... You know, maybe it was warmer during the day, but like at night it got really cold, but they didn't have blankets. I don't know. The point is, you can imagine a situation maybe where it would greatly benefit you to have like more hair or fur like on your body so that you don't get as cold or something. Or maybe, um, you know, maybe, a, you know, make you camouflage better. I don't know. But like, Less than 100 people have that, but you can really see how we're monkeys. We're apes. We're chimps. We're chimps who lost their hair. We're hairless apes. That's what we are. We are hairless apes. And, uh, because... So, uh, that is super 
interesting to me. Now, um, you know, and you can imagine them going off and, and like, kind of becoming a subspecies if, you know, if that hairy trait kept getting passed on and they stopped maybe breeding with other people because maybe other people are like, oh, they got hair all over the body. That's not fucked down. So, like, you get, you know, if they were genetically and, like, environmentally separated from the other population, you could see, like, there being a humanoid, hairy creature that's not a homo sapien, eventually, wouldn't be. Uh, but, I, I don't know, I find that stuff super interesting. And, um, while we're on that topic, uh, in homo sapiens, you know, you can imagine someone having all that hair and kind of be being or becoming like a different kind of, of human or a different kind of, of great ape. And, um, one thing I always thought, you know, you hear things about Bigfoot and about all these other big ape-like animals and, uh, you know, I think it's possible that some of these, like, Bigfoot and great apes and stuff could have been another kind of, like, great ape that that's not human. Okay, so there's, there's Homo sapiens, right? And that's what we are. And then there's also, like, Neanderthals and, um, like, Denisovans or something like that, I believe they're called. And uh, the Denisovans... And I'm going to keep saying it like that, even though it may be incorrect. Uh, but if you type that in um, in Google or something, I'm sure you can find some information. But uh, So we know there are different kind of people. And these, uh, they were great apes. Uh, they were humanoid. And they had culture and stuff. And um, I think the Denisovans, or Denisovans, whatever, uh, they found one buried with like a an ornate bracelet that, like, it's one of the ones where it doesn't close all the way. It's kind of like that, and it goes on your wrist or whatever, you know, whoop, on your wrist. And, um, it was, like, green, and, uh, I mean, it was really ornate, and I think it had, like, some kind of hole in it that they said would have had to have been drilled into it with something that was rotating very, very quickly, because, you know, you can look, you know, you can find stuff like that out with mathematics and stuff. Um, so, you know, and that was something like 200 or 250,000, I don't know, it was a long time ago, like 250,000 years ago. Um, these Denisovans were making ornate jewelry, and um, so they could have been more people than us. And we're people, right? What we think of as people. So, you know, there are other kinds of people, other species of people like the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, and, uh, there could have been more, you know, there probably was more, and, uh, you could imagine there being, like, different great apes that, you know, maybe didn't get as intelligent, but got, like, slightly more intelligent, and then branched off and just got bigger and, or something, and more aggressive, and, you know, maybe there could have been, like, a, a Bigfoot running around that, uh, looked like a gorilla or something, uh, so, you know, there's orangutan, I mean, there's just so many giant monkeys. There could definitely have been other giant monkeys, uh, that we mistook for, um, not human, and they could have been human or nearly human, you know, I don't really know what the definition of human is, but is it a Neanderthal human, or a Denisovan, or like, what about a Homo sapien with some percentage of Neanderthal DNA? Who knows? So that's some interesting shit uh, that I've been thinking about lately. Um, now, I got some more uh, topics to get into today, uh, but I think I'm going to talk about mm, uh, I guess hubris. Uh, I'll leave the AI stuff and the science and tech stuff for next time. But hubris, you know, it's uh, having too much pride and that being the source of your downfall, right? Like, um, Diogelis, or however you pronounce this dude's name, and, um, Icarus, and he made these, uh, 
wings for Icarus um, out of feathers, and he held them together with uh, wax, and so Icarus could fly. But Icarus uh, flew too high, and he was warned not to. But, you know, his pride took over, and he said, I can do it, I've done it this far, I can do it more. And um, so he goes higher, and the sun hits the wax, melts it, his wings fall apart, he plummets to his death. So uh, that's the story of Icarus, and uh, hubris is uh, could could be the end of humanity. I think that's almost definitely what's going to end humanity, is our own pride. Um, whether we nuke ourselves to death, or you know, I guess that did kind of tie in, because I was going to you know move in with the AI talk. You know, the AI could be our downfall. Um, so I'll hit on that a little bit next week. And uh, one thought I had is, like, what if other apes took over? What if this similar thing has happened already, and there's been a kind of ape creature similar to a human that has made culture and technology before, but then they wiped themselves out only for our ancestors to fill that niche that they were filling maybe at one point and before they wiped themselves out. Uh, I don't know. You know, another another ape could take over. And uh, I think that's super interesting. I guess we'll see uh, when the world ends who go ahead and, uh, you know, who's going to fill our spot. Uh, I think wolves held it before. I think wolves were the most... Uh, numerous animal on the planet before uh, humans, or if not the most numerous, they either had like the widest range or um, they were the most dominant in um, their environments, even though uh, they could have, you know, because they could be in a lot of different habitats or environments and um, still dominate and be at the top of the food chain. So I think wolves uh, kind of outnumbered us at one point. But, uh, you know, I'll leave you guys with that. What kind of ape do you think will take over? Uh, uh, I think it might be, I think it might be orangutans, man. I saw this, this thing where this orangutan was like copying humans and he was drawing in like a, in a book. Like he got a piece of paper, a coloring book, and he was coloring. I was like, holy fucking shit, how smart can they be? How smart are they? How much less smart are they than us, you know? Maybe not that much. Maybe not as much as we would think, you know? So, and of course, people would say, oh, it's just copying the behavior that it sees. That's very possible and, you know, probable. But it's also probable that he th is doing that because he thought it looked fun. Or, like, like, you assume the lights are off, you know, in these other great apes. But... I think it almost definitely has to be on, at least somewhat, because you don't, you know, I don't think Homo sapiens, or, you know, I don't think we got consciousness all at one time, everybody in the species at the same time. Uh, there had to have been, like, gradations to consciousness, and so, you know, maybe they were, you know, our ancestors were less sentient, but they couldn't have been not sentient at all, or else we wouldn't, I don't think we'd have a hope to be sentient and to be conscious and to have a subjective experience of reality. Um, so uh, I'll leave you guys with that because that is uh, interesting and um, super profound. Uh, not really, but uh, I find all this interesting. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. This was Boop The World Today with Brian Stiegel, episode six. So uh I really appreciate you guys chiming in and I will see you later in the week. Bye.